We'll present a live one-hour special in-depth analysis on the island's culture and sport. What must be done for improvements, attitudes in sports, success with our former athletes representing the country internationally and sports administration. Guests include former athletes, influential persons within the sporting community and the athletes of today. Join us for this special two-part series beginning Tuesday, November 27th at 8 p.m. on ZFB TV 7 and again Tuesday, December 4th on ZFB TV 7 at 8 p.m. That's Real Sports Talk Bermuda, hosted by Earl Basin, which is brought to you by the Department of Youth Sports and Recreation. Lil Cheap, Gallup, or Macintosh Apples, two-pound bag, just $3.99. Fresh Purdue chicken drumsticks, $1.99 per pound. Kraft mayonnaise, 30-ounce jar, special price, $5.59. Carnation evaporated milk, 410-gram tin, only $1.59. Sargento sliced cheeses, 6.7, 8-ounce packages, hot price, $3.99. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. You're watching Bermuda Tonight. It's Thursday, the 15th of November. I'm Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us. Unionized staff members of telecommunications company One Communications today down tools over a manager being fired allegedly without reason. According to the worker, a total of nine staff, including those in management positions, have been let go or been made redundant in the past 14 months. More than 31 communication staff filed into the Bermuda Industrial Union headquarters just after noon today. They downed tools to meet and discuss what they say are several unaddressed internal issues regarding the hiring and firing of certain staff. Michael Jones, who held a managerial position with the company, said he was denied access to his office this morning as his swipe card had been disabled, with no explanation other than his contract with the company had ended. There's this one gentleman here who has... Um in the time that he's been here, which is somewhere around 13, 14 months, has either directly or indirectly dismissed over nine employees. Not only has he done that, but he's bragged about it. There's evidence of him bragging about it. With 30 years' experience in the telecommunications industry and an expert in his field, Mr. Jones explained he was made redundant when Logic and Cablevision merged to create One Communications, but he was later hired as a contract worker. But now he claims there is evidence to prove it was all part of a plan by management to use experienced former Cablevision staff to build the newer company and then to dismiss them once the new system was in place. They needed me. I didn't call them, they called me, right? But to have us think that there, there was a chance that they were actually going to allow us to come back and build the company up and allow me to do the things that they were asking me to do. And really, the ploy was when they were done with me again to dispose of me. Along the way, they've also disposed of employees due to what they call um, budgeting constraints, but not wait till somebody does something wrong. Let's find some things on them. They specifically pick names. We have proof of that. They pick names and managers were made to find things on these individuals and remove them. The workers today spoke to media outside of the Dame Lois Brown Evans building before going in to meet with the Immigration and Labor Affairs Ministers. According to Mr. Jones, One Communications Management have been unwilling to join the discussion. During my dismissal today, the manager um, that, that my actual direct uh, report wasn't in the meeting, um, was just the HR. When I asked, can we reschedule? No, uh, the decision's been made. I said, well, I, you know, I'd like to ask why I'm being let go, whatever. We don't have to give you that information. It's time for you to go. During the meeting with Immigration Minister Wayne Keynes and Labor Minister Levita Fogo, which lasted three hours this afternoon, the workers alleged a senior manager at the company had made disparaging comments about Bermudians and their work ethic. It's been said that workers from a number of departments, dispatch, construction, maintenance, customer service, among others, have taken part in the industrial action. We sought comment from one communication and a spokesperson told us One Communications confirms that industrial action has taken place regarding the release of a non-union manager. They add, we are actively working with the parties involved to resolve matters as quickly as possible with a view to minimizing any impact this may have on our customers, end quote. 
In international news, the German Chancellor Angela Merkel tonight warning the UK that there will be no re renegotiation of the EU's Brexit agreement. Two high-profile ministers resigned from the Theresa May cabinet in protest. One of them was Dominic Raab, the Brexit secretary. So with the mother country in chaos and the world uncertain over Brexit, Terai Trott spoke to political commentator and economist Bob Stewart for his take from afar. The EU will not negotiate any future partnership. An embattled Prime Minister. Or we can choose. Theresa May today in the House of Commons receiving a grilling from MPs, many from within her own party, deeply upset with the terms of the agreement her cabinet just struck with Brussels, a complex agreement that took two years to negotiate. Agreement and the outline political declaration. Mrs. May's precarious leadership now hanging by a thread. She suffered yet another major blow today when the Brexit secretary himself, Dominic Rabb, who negotiated the deal on Britain's behalf, resigned, saying he could not in good conscience support the draft agreement, which now must get the the backing of the UK Parliament to take effect. All of this leading to the question, where does this leave Brexit? Where does it leave Brexit? Well, up in the air, basically, where it has been for about two years. Bob Stewart, as a local economist and political commentator, he was none the wiser when asked to predict the outcome of the current crisis. There was a big article today in the Wall Street Journal, which was sort of spelled out some of the the trade details, um, but it wasn't all that illuminating because uh, the, it's way too early to determine exactly what the deal is. But if there's a whole slew of resignations, including possibly the Prime Minister, uh, then it becomes a completely different ballgame. The big question is, if Britain is in a political crisis, how does it affect the overseas territories, including Bermuda? Frankly, not very much. I mean, Bermuda is really not that affected by anything to do with trade, for example. There's, there's two areas where Bermuda could be affected, and, and likely will be, but possibly in a relatively minor way. First one is travel. You, 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 it's been pretty easy for Bermudians to travel to Europe. Uh, you know, to France and Germany and so on. I mean, I go there quite a lot um, for one reason or another, and I never have any problem at all with my passport. And like most Bermudians, I carry both a Bermuda passport and a UK passport. It's been suggested that Bermuda could actually benefit from Brexit uncertainty in Europe. Well, Bermuda, I mean, I've, I've always said Bermuda loves when there is turmoil elsewhere in the world. High taxes, you know, threats of war, you, you name it. Um, this is good news for the Bermuda economy as a general rule, particularly for international business. Meanwhile, MPs within Mrs. May's Conservative Party have already started the process of removing her as leader through an internal vote of no confidence. Prominent British MP Jacob Rees-Mogg wasting no time today in writing a letter to start the process. Analysts predict Mrs. May could be ousted as early as this week. Mr. Stewart agrees she could very well be given the sack. Well, I mean, obviously, on a big issue like this, a no confidence vote is, is possible. And if there's been a lot of resignations, uh, for one reason or another, in the cabinet and so on, uh, it is more than likely that there will be some sort of rebellion against her. Uh, I mean, she came into power, really, because of the rebellion against David Cameron. For now, the world waits to see what happens next in the U.K. Tarai Trott reporting for Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Tarai. And we'll have more for you after this short break, including all the latest weather news. Stay with us. Previously at Mailboxes U.S. Express... Mailboxes Unlimited gives you an address in New Jersey for just $20 a year and we'll ship your stuff from there to here and save you over 80% on the shipping. Join the over 11,000 people that are already members of Mailboxes U.S. Express. We are the cheapest and the fastest way to ship stuff from there to here. Excuse me while I answer my phone. My name is Steve Thompson and I approve of this message. Mailboxes U.S. Express. Sign up today. You can count on us. Snow White Cauliflower, only $3.99 each. Fresh assorted pork chops at $3.49 per pound. Freshly baked apple or pumpkin pies, hot price, $6.99 each. Scott Comfort Plus Bath Tissue, four rolls, only $3.49. Save a dollar on Vieira's Portuguese Rolls, hot price, $4.79. All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can get from the very beginning, it was always our singular focus to do whatever it takes, use every possible resource to fight cancer and never lose sight of the patients we're fighting for. 
Our cancer treatment specialists share the same vision. Experts from all over the world working closely together to deliver truly personalized cancer care. And these are the specialists we're proud to call our own. Expert medicine works here. Learn more at cancercenter.com. Appointments available now. The year-end clearance sale is now on at Bermuda Motors. Cargo ships bringing our 2019 models will be arriving soon. To make room, we're offering the lowest prices of the year on these models. Ford Figo, our hatchback with cutting-edge technology. Ford EcoSport, big on comfort, safety, and power. Toyota Avenza, the perfect balance of style and function. Toyota Prius C, our fuel-efficient five-door hybrid. So hurry, prices are available until the end of the year or while our inventory lasts at Bermuda Motors. I'm Tony Waterman, coming up on The Breakdown this week. It's one of the original pillars of the Bermuda economy, tourism and the hospitality industry that supports it. How will the initiatives outlined in the throne speech impact the industry? Plus, a scrum down on the Aerial Re Bermuda International Rugby Sevens Tournament. The game attracts hundreds to the island, and word is, there's room to grow. That's Thursday at 8 p.m. on ZBM TV9. Welcome back. Leisure air arrivals to the island up 10% in the third quarter, despite an almost 3% reduction in air capacity. That's according to figures just released by the Bermuda Tourism Authority, as it boasts 11 consecutive quarters of leisure visitor spending. Here's Gary Moreno with more. That 10% increase in air arrivals was achieved in the face of a 2.5% drop-off in air capacity. The increased air arrivals resulted in almost $114 million in leisure spending, and that's $9 million more than the same quarter last year. Increased air arrivals of 7, 24, and 11 percent respectively from the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. were the major contributors to the increased numbers. Total air arrivals between July and September this year was just shy of 95,000 people. That's 4,600 more than the 90,300 recorded in the same period during 2017. A further breakdown shows that the vast majority of air arrivals was in the vacation and leisure category with 75,000, a 10% increase over Q3 2017. There was a 3% fall off in business visitors, though, to the island, down to 9,600 from 10,000 a year earlier. The number of people coming to Bermuda by air to visit friends and relatives was down from almost 11,000 to just under 10,000 year over year. Elsewhere, hotel occupancy was up nearly 3% in third quarter 2018. Vacation rentals also enjoyed an increase, albeit a marginal one, from 10.3% last year to 11.7% this year. However, vacation renters spent fewer days on the island, down from 9 to 7. And it appears the BTA's efforts to attract younger visitors is paying off. Based on their figures, of the 168,000 leisure arrivals to the island so far this year, 95,000 were below the age of 45. That's a 4% increase year over year. Visitors by sea were not to be outdone, though. Their numbers year to date stand at 349,000, almost 25,000 more than this time last year. Yacht visitors, though, were down from 4,700 year to date in 2017 to 3,800 year to date in 2018. Bermuda Tourism Authority CEO Kevin Dallas said, the measurement we focus on more than any other at the Bermuda tourism industry is leisure visitors by air. Performance in this area is up 26% in arrivals and up 35% in spending since the streak of quarterly growth began back in January 2016. Unquote. According to the BTA, when compared to 2016, an additional $64 million was spent in Bermuda's tourism economy this year. That spending was fueled by an additional 35,000 leisure air visitors over the same time period, that of course being through September 30th. Elsewhere, Mr. Dallas adds, while air capacity was down 2.5% in the third quarter, it remains up almost 4% year to date. Growing airlift, he says, has proven to be a precursor to vacation air arrival growth in Bermuda over the past several years. And if that trend reverses, it would be an obstacle for further growth. It's something, he says, we are watching closely as we do our forecasting for 2019. Gary Moreno, reporting for the Bermuda Broadcasting News. Weather now and a rather wet and windy end to the day. Some cloudy skies and a couple of sprinkles are expected to linger into tonight as seen up on our tower cam. And be prepared for a drop in temperature as well as we move into the weekend. But let's get to the full details over at the AccuWeather headquarters.
by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. The BFNM Insurance Group is pleased to bring you tonight's AccuWeather forecast. Good evening. I'm your AccuWeather meteorologist, Dodgy Aswad. Now, as we head in towards our satellite here, yes, we have some cloud cover across Bermuda, but we're watching out for our next storm to come off the eastern U.S. And in fact, they're getting hit hard tonight and into Friday morning. We'll see this front that's associated with that disturbance, as you can see there, continue to press its way into the Atlantic. And we're talking some strong conditions to come for your extended forecast. As for Currently, we're in the lower 70s tonight here in St. George's, Hamilton, as well as Somerset Village and uh, Dockyard as we head in towards our humidity, 79%. Winds are the southeast, and notice they're pretty high, 16 to 20 knots. Waves in the reef, 2 to 3 feet, and waves out 5 to 10 feet. So, bit choppy out there, and that's why we do have a small craft warning through your Friday night, and that can even be extended into your Saturday morning, so we're definitely keeping an eye on this forecast. Now, as far as our marine concerns go, our low tide tonight, 844 p.m. Next, next high tide will be at 236 a.m. on your Friday morning. Next low tide, 906 a.m on your Friday morning. Once again, we do have a small craft warning for much of tomorrow. Now tonight, partly cloudy skies. It will be windy and we do have the chance for some shower activity with a low of 70. As we continue into tomorrow, those winds not letting up uh, by any means and we'll have plenty of clouds around. The shower activity going to be spotty as you kick off the day. We'll be topping off at 78 and cooling down to 68. Now as we progress progress through the rest of the day uh, on your future cast, you're going to notice that moisture creeping a little closer and that means more enhanced chances for showers and then some heavy rain likely. So here's a look Thursday at 8 p.m. tonight, getting that moisture starting to press its way to the east 12 a.m. still in this cloudy zone here across Bermuda. We'll also be watching a disturbance link up from the south with this front that's going to add some moisture as we head into your Friday afternoon. So around 3 p.m. It's pretty close. It's right on our heels. And that's where we're going to definitely be noticing more clouds, gusty conditions coming in from the south ahead of that front. Uh, behind the front, going to be getting a different wind flow. And But in the meantime, 3 until those overnight hours, 11 p.m., some heavy rain. That's going to lead to the likelihood for some flooding here across Bermuda, especially in poor drainage areas. Going to have to keep an eye out for that. Current conditions across the rest of the Caribbean down towards Trinidad and Tobago also noticing a bit more moisture due to the intertropical convergence zone, which brings in moisture from the south and allows for some heavy rain to continue. Topping off at 81 with a low 76 in Trinidad, Barbados 84, and also looking at some wet weather. If you're getting away, here's a look at the getaway forecast. Toronto 37, New York 48, and looking at wet conditions for tonight and into tomorrow as well. Boston also going to be looking at rain, snow, a little bit of everything for tonight and continuing into your Friday. Our extended forecast here, well, that rain picks up Friday night and continues with us for your Saturday. And then by the rest of Saturday night, begins to taper off and return to partly to mostly cloudy skies for the weekend and into early week. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group. It's hurricane season. Here are some tips from BFNM. Before a storm, make sure you have a family plan. Stock up on food and water and protect your home. Board up and make sure your insurance policies are up to date. After a storm, check everyone's safety, especially seniors. Inspect your property and secure from further damage. Then note the damages, list, and take photos. Remember, you can always count on BFNM 24-7 during hurricane season and all year round. Christmas in Bermuda is a special time for most of us. Unfortunately, for some families in Bermuda, there's no warm Christmas. This year, many families will be in need. It's the 30th anniversary of the Lions Clubs of Bermuda and the Marketplace helping share the Christmas spirit, so let's help take care of each other. Shop at any Marketplace, Shopping Center, Modern Mart, or A1 stores and purchase extra tins of non-perishable items. Once you have purchased these items, place your food donation into Santa's bin located at the front of the store. The Lions Clubs will collect your food contributions and assemble them into hampers to be delivered to the families in need around the island. 
Christmas comes once a year. Help make it a special time for every family in Bermuda. Sponsored in part by the Bermuda Broadcasting Company. Share the Christmas spirit. At ProServe, we've got mail. Did you know at ProServe, we handle over 150,000 mail pieces per month. We have a full mail handler's license, secure, centrally located facilities, state-of-the-art digital printing, insertion, franking, and tracking systems. Even full mailroom operations management, along with experienced staff and the reliability to get your job done right. So whether the job is large or small, by hand or sprint pickup delivery, daily, weekly, monthly, or one-off project, we've got you covered from start to finish with email confirmation. At ProServe, we've got mail. Call 295-7619 or visit ProServe.bm and let's get it started. Thanks for staying with us. Well, men are urged to pay more attention to their health as they turned out in their numbers for the 8th Annual Men's Free Health Screening at the Seventh-day Adventist Building in Hamilton. Mike Sharp attended the event and tells us more in this report. Some 40 men arrived at the church around 8.30 a.m., an hour and a half before doors open. Health Minister Kim Wilson officially opened the health fair and informed attendees that men are more prone to certain diseases. Compared to women, men show higher rates of death from cancer, strokes, renal failure, and external causes like assaults and accidents on our roads. And men tend to be less proactive than women in seeking regular health care. They tend not to talk about their health, and they avoid visiting their physician on a regular basis. This problem is only exasperated for men who don't have health insurance. That is why initiatives such as these today, this free health screening, is vital, not just for men, but for our community as a whole. Men attending today can have a wide range of health screening. They can check their blood pressure, their blood sugar and lung functioning, and they can even have their body composition assessed as well as their feet examined. And I also see that there's a physician on duty that will also be doing prostate examinations. A range of health professionals have generously given of their time today to be here to talk about what to do to maintain your regular health. The Bermuda Cancer and Health Association are the hosts, and their new CEO, Lynn Woolridge, says men need not fear if they do not have sufficient funds for cancer treatment. Bermuda Cancer and Health is first and foremost a charity. We do provide services for which we charge fees, but we are a charity. For the fees that we charge, um, some of them are covered by insurance. But if they're not covered by insurance, we do have what we call an equal access fund. And that fund basically is what we use to cover the costs for people who are either uninsured or underinsured altogether. And that's why it's important for people to realize that when they make a donation, it goes into that equal access fund and it helps regular members of the community. Two well-known former sports figures, George Friday Bremer and Reggie West, had this to say about the health fair. I think it's, it's very important for one to know how their body is, you know, uh, activating to, to, you know, for the health. Yeah. It's very important, yeah. Yeah. Wes? Well, I'm being, my main concern is prostate. Right. I've got to, I want to keep on top of that deal, you know. Yeah. Every time I hear that word, I get nervous. Do you have a yearly checkup? Yeah, I do, but it, there's no copay here, so. What about you, Friday? Uh, yeah, yearly? Oh, yeah, I'm all right, yeah. Just get that little, you know, what men don't like. <laughs> but you, but you got to take it. got to do Find out, you know, what, what, what your situation is. Right. It's important, man. Health is ABC. And I'm Mike Sharp with Bermuda Broadcasting News. Thanks, Mike. And Silicon Earl Basin will have all the latest sports news in just a few minutes. Join us for the annual Christmas parade Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. in Hamilton. Bring the whole family to get into the Christmas spirit. There will be free goodies for the kids and great entertainment for all. Experience new dazzling lights and floats as Santa makes his way along the parade route. Kick off the holiday season Sunday, November 25th at 5 p.m. with the Marketplace 2018 Christmas Parade.
tourism and the hospitality industry that supports it is one of the main pillars of Bermuda's modern economy. The industry has gone through many iterations over the years, and now it could be on the brink of another transformation. Friday's throne speech could have major implications for the hospitality industry. The most obvious impact is the plan for a livable wage. On the breakdown tonight, Tony Waterman asked Bermuda Hotel Association CEO Stephen Todd about the potential fallout for the industry. When you implement a living wage, and if you were to simply move the needle to where you're increasing the hourly rate from that benchmark of $6 to 18 or 20 mm -hmm. in the next couple of years, where does that put the gratuity-based employee versus those that may be on a fixed um, weekly or, or hourly or monthly income? You could actually skew the, the goalpost and uh, you, you would create a, a new imbalance and a new indifference in specifically our industry. And you can catch that entire interview on The Breakdown with Tony Waterman tonight at 8 p.m. on ZPM TV 9. And here's Earl Basin with the latest from the sports desk. It was over the course of the summer that Janai Paranchief learned the University of Arkansas track and field coach was leaving the school. He decided to also transfer to the University of Texas Tech. The long wait is now over as the Bermuda Football Association finally announced the senior men's national team that will play against El Salvador tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. in the CONCACAF Nation League qualifying round match at the National Sports Center. The Bermuda team went through their paces at the National Sports Center Northfield yesterday with all the players in attendance. Reggie Lamb will be handed back the captain's armband after Dante Levrock led the team in the previous match. Bermuda welcomed back Naki Wells, who has not worn a Bermuda jersey in competition for a few years. For various reasons. The Bermuda national team consists of Jaquilla Hill, Zico Lewis, Dante Levrock, Trey Mean, Dale Eve, Lejean Simmons, William White, Sequoia Robinson, Jalen Bather, Reggie Lamb, Darren Usher, Tavon Terrell, Dante Bringman, Roger Lee, Liam Evans, Tamiko Gota, Osaji Bascom, Naki Wells, Willie Clemens, Callan Miners, and Casey Castle. The BizFed 2018 Buenos Aires Bocce Regional Open got underway in Argentina yesterday. Bermuda is being represented by Steve Wilson, Yushe De Silva Andrade, and Omar Hayward. Wilson started out with a 3-2 win over Thomas Marquez Ruiz from Mexico in their individual BC Four Division match. In an old Bermuda individual BC One match, Hayward edged De Silva Andrade 3-2. The Bermuda Cricket Board held their annual general meeting last evening with new faces and some old ones returning to the Bermuda Cricket Board Executive Committee. President Lloyd Smith's position was not up for re-election. However, other positions recently became available through resignations. The Cricket Board's Executive Committee consists of Lloyd Smith as President, Michelle Painter as First Vice President, Paul Ross is Second Vice President, Cheryl Mapp is the Secretary, Moses Mufa is the Treasurer, and Lorenzo Tucker is the Assistant Treasurer and Secretary. The club reps include Kelly Smith, Clay Smith, and Mike Stubble. Elijah Daly competed at the Age Group International Short Course Swimming Championships. Daly competed in the men's 11 to 12 year age group. Daly reached seven finals, finishing on the podium six times. He would lower four Bermuda records along the way. Daly will pick up a silver medal, competing in the 50 meter butterfly, touching the world with the second fastest time of 29.13, breaking Sam Williamson's time of 29.32, set back on March 4th, 2017. Daly will capture a second silver medal when he touched the wall in a time of 105. 87, competing in the 100-meter butterfly, breaking his brother Ethan Daly's record time of 108.42, set back on May 18, 2014. Daly won a bronze medal competing in the 100-meter freestyle with a time of 59.92. Daly would win a second bronze medal during the 200-meter freestyle, and he was clocked in a time of 2.11.84. During the 200-meter butterfly, Daly would win a bronze medal, clocking a time of 2.28.58. Daly would break his brother Ethan Daly's record time, set back on May 17, 2000. 2014, and he was clocked at 238.44. Daly's final bronze medal came during the 400 meter individual medley, and he was clocked across the line in a time of 512.07. This time lowered the previous record time of 526.43, held by his brother Ethan Daly, set back on May 17th, 2014. During the seventh final, Daly would finish fourth with a time of 231.01 during the 200 meter individual medley. 
Needle Lawn Tennis Association announced that Antonio Warner has been selected to attend the ITF Kotec Training Camp. The 12 and under ITF Kotec Training Camp will take place in the Dominican Republic from November 19th through to the 23rd. The invited players for this training camp are selected by the ITF based on their performance in the last 12 months during the ITF and Kotec organized events during the 12 and under invitational tournaments in the region and by the observation of an ITF development officer during tournaments and visits to each nation. Action in the Bermuda Basketball Association's Elite City League moved into the playoffs with a doubleheader inside the Bermuda College Gymnasium. The single elimination first round format saw a total of 188 points scored between the four teams last night. Game one of the playoffs saw the Hornets defeat the Warriors 46-36. to The Hornets were led to victory by Kevin Stevens, who had a game-high 31 points, while Jamal Robinson scored 11 points for the Warriors. Game two saw the Storm defeat the Lions 61-45. to Dashaun Kurt scored a game high 32 points to lead the storm to victory while Kushai Darrow and Omar Wolf both scored 17 points each for the Lions. I'm Earl Beasden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. And I'm Jasmine Patterson. Good night. Jasmine Patterson's wardrobe and makeup is provided by Gibbons Company. On the CBS Evening News this Thursday, the first big storm of the season dumps snow, sleet, and freezing rain. Travel is a mess. Schools are closed. The FDA's new plan to ban some of the most popular cigarettes. And five weeks after Hurricane Michael, we return to Florida with the recovery stalled.